Well, welcome to Coffee with Kelly and a special edition called Coffee with a Client today, everyone. Uh, if you are joining me and Sean Rigo for this episode, I would love to know that you're here. Put it in the comments. And thank you so much, Sean and I, we have our coffee ready, ready. I have my signature coffee with Kelly mug right here in my hands. And if yeah. you've been to a coffee with Kelly, a community meeting, you know that this is our signature mug and we call it our hug in a mug. So <laughs> excited to have it with us here. But um, today's a special episode and I wanted to do a live stream because there have been so many people asking me about the leadership game that I've been doing for a lot of my clients. And I started thinking about this and I'm like, well, I can tell people about it. And I get so excited about it all the time because you all know I am so passionate about leadership and helping organizations develop their leaders. But I'm like, you know what? I think it would just benefit my followers even more and my clients just to hear from someone that has actually used it, uh, applied it in their uh, operation with their teams and it in a way that they've used it and how they uh, or what they took away from using the leadership game as part of their leadership development program. And the first person I thought of to do this uh, was Sean Rigo. And and Sean, I'm so excited to have you here. I've known Sean, everyone, if you're tuning in, I've known Sean for, oh my gosh, probably seven or eight years now. We've worked together and collaborated in so many different ways uh, from helping people find jobs, recruiting, um, yep. to doing you know different projects with leadership development together for different organizations. So Sean, I wanna welcome you to Coffee with Kelly live and thanks. Um, say thanks so much for joining me. So Sean, you wanna introduce yourself? He's grabbing a sip right now. Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, Sean Rigo, I'm the head of talent acquisition for Scotland USA. I just joined a month ago. Um, my background has been 25 years of recruiting and, and, and managing and running talent acquisition or consulting with companies with their recruitment challenges and needs. And uh, Kelly and I met a few years ago. In fact, I think I might have been, Kelly, your first customer, if I'm not mistaken, when you first launched, which I, is hard to believe. That was quite a few years ago. And um, But I remember when we were talking about the leadership game, and um, I was so glad that we did it with the team that I was managing directly at the time. And then we ended up rolling it out to uh, one of the departments at the company with pretty good effectiveness. Absolutely. And uh, we've got some comments coming in here, uh, Sean. We've got a few people. Where are you all coming from? I'd love to know. I know Louisa's here. Uh, I know Shelly's here. Lisa's here. It's so nice to have you guys with us. So thanks so much for joining. And what I want to start with, Sean, because I think a lot of people uh, don't understand what the leadership game is. And a lot of people will hear me say, uh, I have this great tool. It's called the John Maxwell leadership game. But they're like, what do you mean you have a game that you do with uh, companies to help with engagement and and things like breaking silos and building upon communication and just bringing people together within an organization, whether it's a team or an association, a nonprofit, it might be a church setting. Uh, so many different settings that I've brought this uh, leadership experience to. And, and Sean, I wanna start with when we first talked about doing the leadership game with a few of your teams, what was it that you were looking for ideally? And how did the leadership game address some of those things that you wanted to bring to the teams that you served? Well, what we were looking for in, and what I like about the leadership game was that I already had a cohesive team that I was leading at the time. And we, we had been extremely effective um, in fact, we became recognized uh, as a, a best in class recruiting team and, and going from, in some cases, scorched earth uh, to best in class. But uh, in, the, in the spirit of continuous improvement, I knew it was an opportunity for us to continue to, to work together, collaborate and breach and discuss topics that oftentimes are difficult to breach. Right. And so. 
Um, the organization uh, that I was working for at the time had uh, instituted a leadership development, a formalized leadership development program. We hired someone who uh, launched a, a leadership boot camp. There was this continuing and ongoing emphasis on developing teams, and we had um, I had already done an engagement survey and we had some data from that that we wanted to address. And so when we met, we wanted to address those topics and concerns, but in a way that was a little bit light, lighter. Typically, when you're trying to breach some of these topics, it's a little solid, right? And the leadership game put it in a way where it was fun um, and it was engaging and it was allowing us to hear um, other people's thoughts and have open discussion about those things. So that was what we were trying to accomplish. And that was some of the output of what took place. It was really excellent. Yeah. And, and one of the questions I get often is, well, what kind of team is a leadership game truly built for? And when we did it with your teams, uh, and, and I'll say this because if some of you are, are looking for something to engage your teams or bring a team together to address, you know, maybe it is tougher topics, maybe it is you want to add uh, a way of developing maybe your high potentials or even developing the leaders that you've had in place for a while in, in a fun, interactive way that's just not your typical like, let's get everybody together. Let's talk about the profits of the organization. Let's talk about the operations. Let's talk about management. Truly, how can we develop leaders in, in a way that makes it fun, but while also getting value of developing people? And, and when we did this that time, Sean, I remember you had a team that had been together for a long time. You had some new mm -hmm. players on that team. You had some senior leaders on that team. You had some people that were just promoted on that team. Mm -hmm. And it was also including a C-suite leader of that team. Yeah. So what is the leadership game really built for? The answer is, for those of you that have been wondering, it's built for all different levels of teams. And how I facilitate it is based on what you're trying to accomplish within that actual session. And so, Sean, when you had that team come in, what do you remember uh, being one of the greatest takeaways you had from working with that team that you really wanted to bring together to build some more community, break down silos, and just have them learn a little bit more about themselves? Because sometimes teams just, they forget how to communicate with each other, right? And right. think about it now with people working hybrid, how do we bring them together? Yeah, and, and well, and, and and we actually did it twice. We did it with actually a team that was directly under my supervision, which is the team I was referring to, a very cohesive and high producing team. And then we had another team who was a good performing team, but there were some challenges there, right? So what is great about the leadership game is that it does work with an already cohesive team that continues to help them grow and develop, but you can actually have, have it uh, – work with a team, maybe where there's some challenges, even though they may be high performing, there were some challenges and issues within that department. But what I did, the takeaway was that we had a, um, there. once we got into the game and, and the momentum started, um, the team was now collaborating and talking to each other, where in some cases that wasn't the case. And I remember the leader of that department who said, and I remember the quote very specifically, I, I didn't have very high expectations when we started this and it exceeded my expectations. So you took somebody who came into it reluctant and almost show me state to a point where he said that exceeded my expectations. So it was like probably the coolest thing that I walked away from is one of the first big initiatives I had because at that time was Healing talent acquisition and development. So it was a really a big, it was a big win for everybody. Yeah, I, I remember that. And and I love that we've got some people kind of tuning in here, Sean. We've got people from New York City. We have someone from Trinidad, Judy. Yeah. Hi, Judy. Nice to have you. Uh, we have John Ruffini, who's a local LD leader here with a staffing organization. It's so nice to have everybody here with us. So I do remember that. And 
And I think a lot of times when leaders don't know what to expect when they bring a team together and have some difficult conversations, how how do you get that out in a way that is non-confrontational, but in a way that allows open discussion? And that's one thing that I really have always loved about the leadership game, because for the clients that I've done this with over the past three years, it has allowed them to empower their employees to have a seat at a table where they can be heard. Maybe there's something that's going really well in that department or in the organization that no one's ever really taken the time to pause and celebrate like, wow, we recognize this. This is something that's going well, but it also through the facilitation that I do and, and different questions that we, we tap into, it allows your employees at all levels, depending on how, who you're bringing into the experience, to share what they see could elevate the culture to a level that maybe no one's really taken the time to think about or have that open discussion. You've yeah. got different departments maybe that we all are, are valued we're all important. All departments are important within an organization, but maybe they just don't talk to each other or understand what each other goes through sometimes and right. so that's that's one thing i remember from that experience with you where we were able to also connect different leaders of different departments to understand what a day in the life for them is like as well while getting leadership development behind it so do you remember that i do i do it, it you know it, it, and a takeaway was that it was it, it made it fun right and so um which is ironic because again some of the topics that we were breaching um they were they were pretty you know they were pretty deep topics right and they were there's some critical areas and uh, i remember that there was engagement from everybody uh, it, it made it feel safe and um, of course, uh, I think a lot had to do with the facilitator, which was you, but um, it, it, it really made the experience a pleasant experience to deal with, again, you know, tough topics. And so uh, that's not that easy to pull off. Usually it's a pretty solemn event. And, and, and I've, uh, the, 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 the culture at the time is there were people who were afraid to, to, to share information, you know, out of, you know, obviously fear is, is fear, but um, it, in this case, it, it literally knocked down the barriers and it made it just this really engaging process. And again, to have a leader of department and, you know, it, it, everything rests on leadership, right? As John Maxwell says, and, and for the leader to buy in, that sends a critical message to the team that this is important, right? And so... Yeah. Um, that whole team working together like that, the, the value it, that team, from what I know, to my knowledge, is still together. So that was a few years ago. So it's pretty impressive. Yeah. And, and for those of you that are, are trying to imagine, it, it's not your typical board game, but it truly is an experience. And, and just to give you an idea, for example, I do when I facilitate the leadership game with my clients, I actually have cards. Like there are cards that are color coded to match use. And one of the team members would roll the dice and whatever color it lands on is the stack of cards that I pull from. And now the different questions and topics that come out of these cards are all developed by, in, in my opinion, and, and I, you all know I feel strongly about this, by the greatest leadership uh, influencer of, of our time, who's John C. Maxwell. And you all know he's the one that mentored me. He taught me how to be a great leader. But the content from the John Maxwell Leadership Game is actually built around John Maxwell's eight best-selling leadership books. For example, uh, The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Influence, 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth. So if you like what John Maxwell stands for and how he speaks to leadership, 
that's what I've been taught to do. And, and in between questions, as we go through different questions in the game, I facilitate a different lesson around that topic in leadership, whether it's the state of leadership within the organization, uh, personal development and personal growth. What do you need to work on as an individual leader? And then also, Sean, do you remember this? What I love about it too is it's a positive way to allow team members to recognize the good in each other. Right. And guys, seriously, there is a competition going on in this game. So I, I share this with you because if you like fun competition stuff in, in your culture, then it is a competition that the team is going through. And there's going to be a winner at the end. And the winner is going to be based on how they are adding value to the team members in play during play of the game. And yeah. so I'm keeping score and watching points as I give different assignments to allow them to collect points. So that's where it gets really fun and it becomes competitive, but in a healthy way where teams, they want to win uh, and they want to participate uh, in this game because there's going to be something they're working towards, but also working on themselves during this game. So if you remember that, do you remember the dice that we had, Sean? I do. I, I and, and it's so it's funny it, is I remember the outcome and I remember what happened in some cases, but the nuance of the specifics of the game. And I now I remember that actually we were keeping points. And so what was yeah. there was some competitiveness there in regards to some award. And, and I remember I think you had some some Merdler swag that you gave us uh, uh, for, for the for the winners. But it, 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 it was, in a, I think we did a four, a half day session. So we were there for some time and then part, we, we shared lunch together and so on. But when we left, it was almost like we left a social event, right? And, and you know, which, which a lot of teams have, like, you know, the team building exercise is a social event where they sit down and eat. Um, it, it was like that, you know, and, and so it didn't really feel like, an exercise, and I've participated in exercises before, and I'll share one with you and you'll get a kick out of it. We sat at a table to direct reports to the chief human resource officer at a company, and we had to do this exercise like um, um, what we like about the person, mm -hmm. what we'd like to change about the person, <laughs> you know? And, and I remember like being so uncomfortable to have to look at my boss, the chief HR officer, and tell that person what I wanted to see them do better. And I was just like, this is so, because it was so formal. Yeah. But in the game, I don't think we necessarily did that specific, but we did talk about things we liked and, 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 and so on. But we were addressing tough things that, again, if you put it in a, uh, 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 an un, I say a structure, but like where you're just literally asking the question, it's so much different of an effect when there is this competitiveness where we're in, and, we're, and we were working in teams as well, um, together, exchanging ideas and comments about different things. Um, it really made it fun. And um, when people maybe that I wouldn't necessarily, you know, socialize with, was, I was having a good exchange with them because I was participating as well, even though I was not necessarily a direct part of that team. So it's is kind of helping you facilitate the participating as well. So, uh, yes, I, I remember that. And you roll the dice, we were picking colors, and, then, and you'd have like an exercise that we would do or that we would address a question. But, but it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, and right now with just – as we've all heard, the great resignation is upon us and a lot of talk around, you know, culture and employee retention. It's something that I'm getting asked a lot more about. And one thing I share just as thoughts to some of the leaders that may be listening in, how do you engage your teams? Uh, I, I think a lot of times we have forgotten how to communicate with people. Uh, you know, as I learned from John, it is everyone communicates everyone's communicating there's texting there's emails there's messages going out but we're forgetting how to connect with people so right. everyone communicates but so few connect and and that's such a key piece of how this game is facilitated is really 
allowing the employee population or the teams or the association, whoever it is we're bringing forward for this, to have some time to truly connect while learning and growing together and sharing their ideas, sharing their thoughts, sharing uh, what could make them better. And that's that's been a win when I can walk in there and see a team truly connect with each other. And a lot of people ask me right now too, Sean, so think about this, we did it live. So we did your uh, experience live, but guys out there, if you're listening and this is something that is catching your attention, you're like, oh wow, that sounds great. Uh, but we're working in a remote and a hybrid world right now, then it, hey, don't worry. I do this virtually as well. Uh, and I have a virtual version of how we can facilitate this virtually. So Sean, we've got one coming up with your team and and I'm excited to uh, be able to do this with you all soon. And and what is, what feedback have you gotten from the team that we did it with as well? What did they remember? Share, what do you remember sharing uh, that they shared with you? Um, you know, it was one thing that I remember, and I was just thinking about that was, um, you know, you mentioned uh, communication styles and, and um, I listen to Audible when I'm, I'm driving. Yeah. And so whether it's Maxwell or whomever, Senec and so on, um, people, um, people recognize or um, accomplishment different ways, right? Or, um, or share, um, you know, approval different ways. And probably the most effective as we know is actually just physically telling someone, hey, great job, I appreciate you. Um, and we don't always communicate outwardly, verbally, with words and actions, how we feel. And the takeaway was, is like, I didn't know you felt that way mm -hmm. or you, you recognized that in me um, or, 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 or we were given a perception of something we didn't even know. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, it, it's, 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 it's helped develop me personally as a leader because as it is, you know, you get better as we get older and not the gray hair or, or white in my case, I might appear. Um, but we get better. Or we, we hope to get better at doing those things in communication. And, and it's helped me actually, as I talk to uh, now in integrating in a new team here now, today is actually my 30 day mark. I can't believe it. Um, but as I've met with team members, I've said, you know, you encourage them to provide Hey, if you have a question, concern, or comment, I really want you to come and tell me about it because I can't fix what I don't know is a challenge or an issue. But also, it keeps an open communication and dialogue, and it's really helped me uh, spend more time letting people know I appreciate you, thank you, or as being specific yeah. as to why I appreciate them. Yeah. Um, so, but the takeaway was it, it, it aired things up so that people had a better perception yeah. of each other. Um, and then of course it dealt with, in some cases, very specific, because the yep. can set this up, if I remember correctly, that we can address certain, here's some of the challenges we're facing specifically based upon the engagement survey. And it yep. allows us to do a fun but structured way of addressing those things. So the, the, yeah. the one thing that was, I didn't know you felt that way. About yeah. and it was like, wow, that's 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 huge, right? To to convey that to somebody. Yeah, it's funny. You just made me think of something. Um, as we're getting older, we're getting better. You know, Sean. Sometimes I I know a lot of leaders that they're getting older, but they're not getting any better. No. <laughs> <laughs> you made me think about that. You have to be very intentional. Um, yeah. So. That, that is a really great takeaway uh, as, as I think about just organizations that are really trying to move through and figure out how to keep teams connected in this remote and hybrid world that we're going through. And, and that's why I thought I wanted to share it with uh, my audience because I think that's such a key component right now that people People are missing the connection. I hear yeah. it all the time with my coaching clients. I hear it all the time in culture surveys that I do. Uh, whether they're remote or in person, it's it's a different world. And people are missing that connection with people and having conversations, whether it is virtual or live. So that's an important takeaway of what the leadership game can bring. 
Um, and just on a final thought, Sean, I wanted to give you just a moment because you're always such a wonderful client to work with. And I know you're in your new organization, new building. Is there anything that you need right now that you're hiring for or anything that you want to share with my my following that you need? Yeah. Um, so you, and I, I say that I was in retirement. Right. But I, 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 I hung up my shingle. I went into routine search and, 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 and was very busy quite busy, more busy than I can actually handle. <laughs> so, um, and when this opportunity came up, uh, it was referred to me from a friend and I took a look at it um, and I'm gonna land my plane here, but I, I started doing the research on the company and the culture of the company. And uh, what I was really impressed by is the content that I saw there was really consistent, that this was an organization that really cared about people. The interviews I saw of our, our, our our president of the U.S. Division, Executive Vice President Ryan Carter, was about how important people were, and we were building this new building. We were growing, crazy growth. Um, we're in the third-person logistics business. We, we we ship and transport mostly like frozen foods, produce, and so on, uh, from everything from growers to processors, packaging to, to to distribution centers for grocery stores, and so on, and. Um, I showed up on site and there was this energy, right? And, and anybody that knows me, uh, I'm not always on coffee. I just really a uh, high energy person. And I, I immediately remember feeling like, okay, I like this, this fits me, right? And so as I've engaged and, and interviewed and talked with different people um, in the organization, I just automatically had this fit of culture, right? And it, it's a consistent culture across the, the group. And as I sat with people and shadowed with them, and they really did a very good process of me sit in, in the interview process, even though it wasn't my job, I sat with, with our logistics account managers or a GM and, and watched what they did on, on a day-to-day -day basis. And it was so interesting to me. And so what we, what we recruit is a number of different things, like people that help coordinate uh, the, the, the pack, the, the, uh, the shipments, right? So the loads. And so as we are uh, bidding and acquiring uh, the, 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 the management of the load, so we're like a one-stop shop. We uh, pick up the load and, and keep the customer informed of the whole process, temperature, delivery on time, everything. So we have coordinators that do that. And we have managers that actually land those accounts or maybe we win like the likes of a major grocery chain or something like that or a major uh, manufacturer or producer of certain uh, consumable products right so mostly what we look for is coordinators trainees or experienced logistics account managers that's probably where we have the biggest need because our business is just well ahead of projected revenue and earnings and that's why we had to get into this new building which is right off of 75 uh, there in South Fort Myers off Alico of Road. But we were hiring for um, um, carrier services managers or um, which is like handles our claims and manages all of our, uh, our, our drivers. So we have a fleet of our own vehicles, but we also have 56,000 different companies and drivers that work for us carrying thousands of loads a week to and from. So. Um, it's a recession proof business because regardless of what's going on with COVID and so on, we all have to continue to eat. Right. So, yeah. so um, there are, uh, there are opportunities now, mostly in, in that area. We have an office here in Tampa, a big now all in one location in Fort Myers and an office in Indy and more offices to, to come throughout the country because we, as we grow, we have to expand the business because of the volume of people it takes to, to do that. But we're, we're launching, um, continuing to grow our internship program. We're going to be traveling to different universities and colleges across the United States. We're looking at what we can do to provide housing and per diem for students. So when they come and intern, we're, we're investing in leadership development. They have and continue to do that. Thus, you're going to be a part of that. So um, if you like um, a dynamic, energetic climate, which literally would have no cap on your earning potential, literally none, um, to get into this is is a really exciting opportunity. So as and we're continuing to evolve, 
uh, and update our, our social platforms and websites and stuff like that's part of what they brought me on board to do as well. So check out scotland.com, the USA division. We have a Canadian division too. We were founded in Canada and, <laughs> and, and, um, and really we were a, a grower. And then we started doing transport of our own product and then we evolved into now uh, doing this for companies and growers all across the country. It's really pretty amazing story. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's so refreshing to sit with someone like Ryan Carter and our GMs who really embrace leadership. And um, we're not perfect. None of us are. We all have our challenges. But the fact that we have a continued emphasis on, you know, which is the definition of lean is continuous improvement. Can we look at what we're doing today and do it better? And uh, it's it's really cool. So I appreciate you letting me do that. And so uh, Scotland, I'm here in the Tampa office. We're literally right across the street. Literally, I see the big bucks flag across the street there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and so we're here in our offices here in Tampa. So anyway, uh, but we have the big office in Fort Myers and that's our headquarters office. Uh, and I'm so excited for your new building, Sean, and, and to work with your team and and uh, have some fun with uh, developing leaders like that's that's what it should be. I, I, I mean, yeah. I think about so many times when uh, I've been to or a part of uh, leadership development uh, uh, initiatives and it's just been the same old, same old PowerPoint up, talk about the same old things we've always talked about. So thanks for allowing uh, me to to have you come in today and share your experience of how uh, the leadership game can really be a game changer, like in your leadership development program, uh, whether it's to do culture engagement survey or to figure out what does your team need and how can you take that team and that culture to the next level? So I'm excited. And for those of you that have not been to Coffee with Kelly yet, I'm going to go ahead and invite you tomorrow morning. We meet every Friday, 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. on Zoom. Uh, you will see the link going in the comments. So if you want to join me and the Coffee with Kelly tribe tomorrow, I have over 400 baristas, inspirational baristas all around the world that come into Coffee with Kelly every Friday. They come in and out and we're here to serve you and really be a part of uh, light in your life. So tomorrow, 8 a.m., if you want to come, just register uh, on the Zoom link provided. And then Sean, for your um, kindness in being here today, I have really good news. You get an official hug and a mug, coffee oh, with Kelly mug. Yep, That's guys. Awesome. So I, it will be I, sent I'm out. To you. I can't wait to get it. <laughs> for being my special guest today um, and sharing, but you've been an honorary tribe member for for a long, long time. So you're always welcome. And uh, guys, thanks for joining me. I'm doing more live events with Coffee with Kelly and trying to just get more kindness and goodness and value out into the world. So thanks, Sean, for, for being a part of this. And I can't wait to see all of you tomorrow uh, in our actual Coffee with Kelly virtual coffee shop. So Sean, anything you want to say to end this call? No, I, uh, yes, I, I want to say thank you for inviting me. It, it, so it, it, uh, you and I never have a, a quiet conversation. Never. There's never a loss of words. And I'm looking forward to you and, and us getting together face-to-face uh, -face soon and, and doing this, this leadership game with the teams here at, at Scotland USA Group. I really appreciate you. Thank you. Absolutely. Guys, if you want to book a leadership game experience, my information is on the ticker below and you know where to find me. I'm always on LinkedIn or you can find me at kellymerblerco.com and uh, I look forward to serving you. So thanks for joining. I'll be back next week for another LinkedIn Live with a new conversation and have a wonderful day, everyone. Thank you.